Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my stop on the November Spellbinders Club Kit Hop, hosted by LV Handcrafted here on YouTube. I hope you'll stick around, see which clubs I received this month, find out which one I'll be using today, and see what I'm going to create. Each month, my friend Lynn of LV Handcrafted hosts some fun, casual hops here on YouTube featuring new Spellbinders products. Since I do receive three of the club kits each month, I like to participate not only to get out and put these to good use, but to see what others are creating as well. So since this is a hop, please make sure that you do visit everybody's video to see the next person in line after me. You're going to check out the very top of my description box. And I also have a list of everybody in the hop down there as well. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. This month, I got the stitching die of the month, which is called Grand Stitch Blossoms. The large die of the month, which is Towering Blooms and is so full of dies, I had to use a little extra piece here. And then finally, the Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. Now, I will link all three clubs in the description box below if you want to check them out. But for my video today, I'm going to be focusing on the Clear Stamp of the Month, which is called Sending Sentiments and the Coordinating Dies. I'm going to show you how easy it is to add lots of colors to a card, even if you have something just as simple as a sentiment stamp set. When I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I am using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Like I mentioned before, I want to add lots of color to my card today just using the Sending Sentiment stamp set. Now to do this, I want to use maybe three to five different ink colors, but use the same stamp just for some variation and added color. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I'm going to find my color combo today and different options you might have or might want to look into. First of all, you have probably seen me use my Sarah Renee Clark color cubes. I usually like to do these like by picking a random number and then using a create and quad from Tailored Expressions with them just so I can quickly come up with a color combo because like I've mentioned before, if it's not a rainbow, I probably can't put the colors together. So I do have the two boxes and there are 500 total cards, but what I'll do, sometimes I just really just go in and just pick one out. Other times I'll use a random number picker but you just pull a card so here's this and then you could pull inks and card socks that go with this and then you know they look good together because you have that photo right there with all of them again just a fun way I like having the visual she does have an online edition as well that you can get if you want to check these out I do have a link in the description box below another thing I like to do is find color combinations online Pinterest or Instagram are probably good options for that or even just a simple Google search. But um, a couple, yeah, a couple years ago, holiday 2021, Got Joy Creations and K Warner Design put out this ink combos guide. It was meant for holiday and winter, but you could definitely use these year around. If I can still find this, I will link it below. This has been a really good tool to have in my arsenal, kind of like with the color cubes. It has the picture with the different colors and they have some companies here like Simon Says Stamp, Gina K Designs, Tim Holtz, where they have inks that are close to the colors given. But as always, like today, I won't be using those companies. I'll be using tailored expressions. So you'll kind of see how just pull from your own stash what might look close. For my color combo today, I'm going to be using the Color Inspiration Cheat Sheet Cards from Tailored Expressions. I got this when I placed an order during their birthday month, and it gives you some occasions like Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Valentine, birthday, and some different color combos that might look good for those occasions. 
I'm going to be making thank you cards. So I figure on Thanksgiving, instead of going with the traditional, I'm going to try out this retro color palette. So I'll be stamping that hello in all four colors, and I'll make one of those stand out by die cutting it and popping it up. So I'm going to go ahead and go pull all those colors that I need and we'll get started. To get started, I'm going to be stamping the main part of my sentiment, which is the word sending from the stamp of the month, onto a piece of white cardstock that I pre-cut to 5 inches wide by 3 and 3 quarters inches tall. Now I'm going to be stamping multiple times and just shifting my cardstock up and down on my Misty, so I made sure when I put it in place for the first time that the bottom of my cardstock was lined up with the 6 on the ruler. Now I did decide that I wanted poblano pepper to be the sentiment or the piece that stands out, the word that stands out, and I want to stamp that first. But you also want to start with your lightest ink, which for me on this card it's spearmint. So I took a little bit of time, I got the word sending set up and made sure that it would work with the other part of the sentiment I'll be using. And now I'm going to use spearmint to stamp the main one where eventually the poblano pepper will be. But this way I'm not putting a super dark ink on there first and then going back to the lighter ink. Now once that's done, I move it down. I think the first time I tried an inch, but it wasn't quite enough, so I kept moving it down until it looked good. And you just want to remember how much you shift it for this first one, because that will be the same shift for each of the remaining sentiments. Once I did have a good shift on it, I inked it up again with the spearmint and stamped it. Now you'll want to make sure between each stamping that you do clean your stamp well or between each colored ink just so you don't contaminate the ink pads or get a different color than what you're expecting. So once I stamped the second spearmint, I cleaned off the stamp and I stamped it up with the mold wine. To make sure I didn't get any of that extra mold wine on my fingers or on the back of the card and then make a mess, I did clean that off as well as the stamp. Now this is a dark ink, so it does like to stain stamps, so I brought in my Tailored Expression Spray just to make sure I got off enough of that mold wine as I could. It still is stained, but when I go to stamp it with the final ink, which was Sweet Potato Pie, that red or that mold wine really doesn't make a difference. Once those were all stamped, I brought in a couple scraps of white cardstock to finish my sentiment. On this first one, I'm setting up the same sending stamp, and now I'll be stamping it with that poblano pepper ink, which is going to be the one that stands out later on the card. The next scrap of cardstock is to finish off the sentiment, and I chose the little strip that reads, The Warmest Thanks. I got that set up kind of centered, and for this I'm going to be using chocolate truffle ink. I just thought this would maybe go better with the color palette than a black. So I got that stamped, and with this skinny font, you don't want to press too hard. Once the stamping was done, I did the die cutting. I used a scallop rectangle on the poblano pepper cardstock, and then I cut four copies of the sending die, one that was stamped and three from white cardstock, and I used the little sentiment label die for the coordinating sentiment. Now for some dimension on sending, I'm going to layer all four of those die cuts together. And so I have some wiggle room, I'm using my Barely Art liquid glue and just making sure to line up each layer well so it's not the Leaning Tower of Pisa but a nice stacked up font. Once those were all done, I set them to the side under a clear block to dry. While that dried, I worked on card assembly. Off camera, I cut and folded a spearmint card base, and then I added the stamped layer and the scallop layer to the front of that using ATG. For now, I'm just going to keep this card nice and flat. When all of those pieces were together, my sentiment had had time to dry, so I'm going to finish adding that. For the sending, I added liquid glue to the back of those layered pieces and placed it as best as I could right over where the stamped copy was. And then on the coordinating sentiment that goes with it, I added some foam tape to the back to give it a little lift and I placed that to the bottom left of my sentiment. 
To finish off the cards, I wanted to add a little sparkle, so I brought in the Gold Mix Color Essential Gems from Spellbinders, and I placed five toward the bottom front of the card. Also on the inside, I put a piece of white cardstock so that my personal message to the recipient was easy to read. Now before I go, I do have two bonus cards that I want to show you. I think this idea is going to be great when you need a super quick card or maybe you want to mass produce a lot to either have them on hand or give away as sets to friends and family. So what I did, I switched up the color palette and the orientation and here are a couple more cards I created. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to visit the next creator on the hop by using the links in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.